Ha have you had time to, to let it all sink in at this point? Yeah, um, a little bit, you know, um, just just thinking about it, uh, letting it sink in and, and see what I got to um, do after for the next couple of months, you know, to, um, you know, just keep working and uh, be a great fit on the team and just um, just keep working. When you, you saw Adam Silver get up to that podium and announce your name, what's going through your head those first few seconds? I was very excited because, um, you know, you know, I thought I was going to go a little bit earlier than that, but when he stood up there and called my name, it was just a blessing. You know, I was just being patient, and, you know, I knew God was going to put me in the right position, in the right place, and that was San Antonio. You know, this was a great excitement at the time. You know, everybody was cheering on and, and see my name across that board or something, something great. What was everyone's reaction around you? I know that you were down in, in Indianapolis with, with friends and family. Did, did everyone kind of go crazy? Yes, everybody went crazy. Everybody jumped and said, you made it, you made it. You know, now it's just time. The work still go on. You know, it's never, it never going to end. And it just got real loud and crazy. I couldn't even hear what Jay Phillips them had to say about me. But, you know, it was a special moment. And it got loud and crazy there. San Antonio, they're just coming off an appearance in the finals. They're considered one of the best organizations in the NBA. How do you feel about joining them? I feel great about joining them. I know that system is great, great organization. They make your eyes better. You know, Pop is a very good coach. You know, in my eyes, he's, he should have been coach of the year this year. And um, he's just a good coach. And, you know, they know how to make players better and know how to get with with all those players. And, you know, they, they trust and believe in their players. You know, if they didn't trust, they wouldn't have picked me at this position. And there's some trust and believe in me. And I know they would, you know, treat me well and try to help me as get as successful as possible I can. Rewind a few years. Mono Ginobili was drafted 58th by the Spurs. He's now potentially a Hall of Famer. Danny Green was taken 46th a few years ago. At one point, people were talking about him as the Finals MVP frontrunner. Does that make you confident? Does that make you excited when you've seen what they've been able to do with guys taken in the second round in the past? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of guys who succeed in the second round. And, you know, that's like a motivation to me. You know, uh, motivation to keep going because guys like that who works really so hard and, and be in the position that they're in is, is something great. And, you know, they put the work in. And I know once you put the work in, everything will fall into place. You know, uh, the old saying I saw, I just heard, you know, the grinders, uh, the grinders will be successful, you know, and, and, and that's where I threw a motor in my, my head. Were you getting worried as as the second round started to progress and and you weren't you weren't getting the calls or you weren't you weren't hearing your name called? Yeah, I was I was getting, I was getting very worried, you know, because you know uh, the hard work I put in, the time I put into this game, you know, I was just it was getting kind of worried and I was getting kind of you know kind of a little doubtful a little bit, but um, I know just kept my head up in and I know God was going to put me in a great place and, and he did and that was San Antonio and that second round hit and then kept going down it's like 50, 50 something I was just like come on Jesus I know you have me back and it was San Antonio Spurs in your in your conversations with the Spurs uh, last night and maybe into today what have they told you as far as what they liked about your game and where they see you potentially fitting in with their organization uh, they think I could, they no longer fit in their organization the ability to score and score in different ways. Um, you know, they just they just going they said they're gonna maybe try to be as successful as I can by, you know, helping with the other things, you know, just being so efficient and um and all that. So, you know, I talked to them, they said some grass and, you know, they're glad that I'm a Spurs and they're gonna do anything and they probably could to help me be successful. <laughs> Now, I know you've played with a good big man in the past with Jared Sollinger. You've played with a good point guard in Aaron Kraft. Now it's Tim Duncan and Tony Parker. How do you feel about that? That is something great. The Stone Special, two Hall of Famers, uh, no doubt. And then when I'm going there, I'm going to be in there and, you know, learn. Learn and be coachable and, and learn from them, from the other guys that they've been in the situation. They know they've been in the situation I have. And uh, just go in and learn. It's going to be something special to play with a Hall of Famer, a great player like that who's understanding the game and uh, the will to win. What's the timetable look like for you now? When do you head out there? When do things get going with uh, with Summer League? 
actually uh, head out there um, Monday and uh, go on from there. Some leagues at nine, at, uh, July 9th and just go out there and work hard and uh, keep working on my game. Now that you've got that, you know, you've got your foot in the door, you, you've, you've got your foot in the door with the Spurs, what's it going to take to make this a career now? Uh, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of work and grind. You know, it's going to take a lot of uh, being coachable, understanding, and, and learning and uh, picking things up real quick. Them things that's going to really help. And, and just, just have that faith and just keep God first and, and just believe. And, um, just keep working hard. And, you know, the sky's the limit with those things, when you do those things, especially in the future. Is it is it possible to, to even comprehend, looking back, a kid – from Bishop Lures, growing up playing at the old YMCA, and now the NBA. What what's that like? Uh, it's something special. I've been growing up, you know, all my life thinking about it, you know. And now it's here. Now it's just now you gotta take it to a whole other level to, to stay in the NBA. You know, that's the easy part is getting in there, but the uh, hardest part is staying. So you know, I'm gonna try to go in there and just keep. Keep my mind steady, keep grinding like I've been doing, uh, and, and never stop. You know, that's that's the thing about it, to be successful coming in as a young kid. I know if I grind hard, things will pay off. Now, i got to ask, you go back to the NBA Combine, you made some headlines when the Spurs asked for your cell phone number, and, <laughs> and you wouldn't give it to them. You said, if they want it, they can draft me. Are you going to give yeah. them the number now? Uh, actually, they they got it. They got it. Uh, you know, it was all a misunderstanding. You know, everybody was just joking and laughing about it. That's, I guess, I guess you could say that's a rookie mistake. Put it like that. How about a rookie mistake who was, uh, you know, born into a great organization? Then you want to keep your heads up and no trick questions. And I didn't. I just, you know, it was a rookie mistake. But you know, it was all laughing, joking. They understood. And um, you know, they got my number and now they draft me. So <laughs> that's something special. <laughs> 